In 480 BC, at the Battle of Thermopylae, a force of 7,000 Greek hoplites was able to thwart the advance of the Persian army with over 150,000 soldiers and cavalry, a numerical advantage of over 20 to 1. This simply would not have been possible had the engagement occurred in the desert where the Persian army was used to operating. They would have used their superior numbers and maneuverability to chase down the Greeks, surround them, break their flanks, break their position, and chase down any stragglers and crush them with very little difficulty. However, this engagement occurred in Greece, and the Persians were forced to march through a narrow pass with on the one side the ocean and on the other side a giant cliff. Under these conditions, they could not bring their superior numbers or maneuverability to bear, and the Greek force was able to stymie their advance for one full week until they were finally able to circumnavigate the environmental obstacle of the cliff. That's how important environment is. So, welcome everyone. This is the Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Power Gamers Tactics Room. I'm your host, Bill Braun Bafflestone. And this is the third installment of my seven-part series on what I call the seven tactical aspects of combat, which, to remind you, are one, terms of engagement, two, maneuverability, three, environment, four, resource management, five, efficiency, six, offense, and seven, defense. Today, I wanted to talk about environment. In terms of Dungeons & Dragons, I divide environment into three further categories, space, obstacles, and obscurement. So in terms of space, every D&D encounter falls along a spectrum where on one end you have a completely open space, a flat plain, no difficult terrain or obstacles, uh, normal lighting conditions, and the sky above. And at the other end, you have a completely constrained position everyone cramped into a small dark room. There is going to be a spectrum of encounters, but typically the best scenario is for you and your party to be in an open environment while your enemies are in a constrained environment. Open environments minimize or maximize maneuverability, minimize the effective area of effect spells, and tend to favor ranged specialists and spellcasters, while constrained environments minimize maneuverability, maximize the impact of area of effect spells, and tend to favor melee. So because you are going to encounter a range of open and constrained positions, you are absolutely going to need to have options for both. If you are a spellcaster, you are going to need options in that small, cramped, dark room. And if you are a melee character, you are going to need options in that open space. So as power gamers, we need to definitely have those options available, but we also are going to want the ability to manipulate these conditions and open our space if we are constrained and constrain our enemies if they are open. So how do we do this? We do so by introducing to the field obstacles. Now the party has a number of means at its disposal to do this, primarily its front line. Every party is going to be a mix of melee characters and ranged specialists slash spellcasters. So typically the melee characters are going to rush forward, engage the enemy, and form a line with the intent of preventing penetration so that the enemy cannot attack the relatively softer spellcasters and ranged specialists. That's not so easy in 5e due to the way opportunity attacks work. So they are probably going to have to be standing shoulder to shoulder or at least very close to each other and ideally optimized for that sort of thing with the sentinel feet uh, and or the ability to grapple. However, that is typically not going to be enough to constrain your enemies to your maximum advantage. So you are also going to want to have the ability to create either difficult or deadly terrain. So difficult terrain, I consider things like walls and other things that people are going to be unable to pass through, uh, or the creation of environmental hazards that no one is going to want to enter voluntarily. Things like sleet storm, web, cloud kill, uh, you know, there's a whole range of spells that create uh, such environmental hazards. So you are going to want to have these abilities available so that you can constrain your opponents and gain an advantage in that way. And one of the things that you're looking is for cover. 
Uh, cover is one of the very best defenses in this game. If you have total cover, you are largely immune to being attacked. And so if you are operating in an open space, uh, you can often use your maneuverability to take advantage of cover, and I strongly recommend that you do so if you can. Uh, if you are, um, you know, initiating the attack and you have cleared rooms behind you, uh, it's pretty easy to just step into the previous room and then step out of line of sight. Uh, but there's a range of options where you might be able to find cover uh, and utilize it in combat. You're looking for total cover, but don't undersell the value of half or three quarters cover. Uh, and you can actually create half cover pretty easily in this game. All you need is another creature between you and your attacker. So sometimes you can use your front line. Sometimes you can arrange that perhaps with a summon whose entire job is just to stand in front of you and provide this cover while pumping out ranged attacks. And half cover is a plus two to AC and plus two to dexterity saving throws, which is a pretty significant advantage given the bounded accuracy rule set of fifth edition. Uh, don't forget that your opponents are also going to be seeking to constrain you. So you are going to have to have abilities that can open up your space if they attempt to do this. Abilities like flight, enhanced speed, free action, teleportation, uh, or the ever handy dispel magic. So make sure that you have those abilities to constrain your enemies and the ability to escape constrainment, or at the very least, operate under conditions of constrainment. The final aspect of environment that I wanted to discuss is obscurement. Uh, obscurement is a wonderful way to get an advantage on your opponents. You, as a spellcaster, have lots of means of obscurement available, like Flog Cloud uh, or Darkness and a range of other spells. But keep in mind that obscurement in a vacuum does not confer a tremendous advantage. If both parties are obscured from each other, then they attack each other normally, and no further applications of advantage or disadvantage can be put into effect. Uh, and so in terms of exchanging attacks, it, it doesn't really have uh, much of an impact. The strongest uh, ability of obscurement is to prevent the use of spells that require line of sight. Uh, which there's a lot of really good spells that require uh, sight. So uh, if you are protected from them, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, but keep in mind that you are going to have to have spells available that will work under Obscurement. Uh, you're going to feel pretty silly if all of your spells require sight and then Obscurement goes up and now you're pretty much helpless. Uh, the other advantage uh, Obscurement grants in a vacuum is the ability to hide. Uh, so if you're going to take advantage of that, you are going to need to have a suite of stealth abilities. But the real advantage of Obscurement comes when you start to invest in ways to make it work to your advantage. For example, if you take the alert feat, now you are attacking normally and are being attacked at disadvantage under Obscurement. That's a, a huge advantage, especially if many people in your party have alert. Now you can start using uh, Obscurement to gain an advantage. Uh, the ideal uh, way to use Obscurement is where they are obscured and you are not. You can affect this through the use of things like Illusions. That's one of the reasons that Minor Illusion is the best cantrip in the game. Uh, you can do it with combinations like Devil Sight uh, and Darkness. Uh, you can acquire a Dagger of Blind Sight. Uh, so there are ways to engineer it where you uh, can see and they cannot, and that gives you advantage on your attacks and are you are attacked at disadvantage. So that's fantastic. Uh, another way to take advantage of obscurement uh, is through summons. Uh, there are a range of summons that have blind sight. So if you have tiny servants available, uh, if you can cast animate objects, uh, or if you can summon certain creatures that have blind sight, uh, then under these conditions, obscurement is also very powerful. Uh, regardless, I strongly recommend that power gamers uh, invest in ways to give themselves advantage under Obscurement, because if you do, not only will you be able to confer to yourself a consistent advantage against creatures that are not so optimized, but if you are ever subject to attacks by enemies that are optimized, then they will not be able to gain an advantage against you. So that's it. That's my analysis of environment. Thanks so much for watching, and please tune in next time where I talk about resource management, the fourth of the seven tactile aspects of combat. This has been the Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Power Gamers Tactics Room. I'm your host, Bill Braun Baffelstone. See you next time.